Greetings and salutations and welcome back to the channel to another video where I do fun stuff to the car. <laughs> this fun stuff is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm very excited about this, a little bit nervous. Uh, it is doing new custom brake lines. I'm also adding a couple other little things, but I will tell you what that is. Uh, first, I wanna show you a little bit what's going on right now and then kind of dive into the details. I've only seen one other video on this topic for the specific car uh, for an S197 and uh, that's my buddy Brendan. He did a great video on that and I'm gonna do it similarly but not exactly the same and I'm also gonna show a little bit of how to take it apart and um, yeah, hopefully this will be helpful to some of y'all. So here is car in the front. The main reason that I'm doing this is to delete the ABS, which is right here. I have the BL Fab single turbo kit for the 14 Mustang GT, and it right now is bent out of the way because I've had it bent with the zip tie, as you can see from that corrosion and dirt that's on my <laughs> tube to the front end. Uh, but this hits the turbo, literally hits the turbo with this turbo kit. And then all the brake lines are right here by the headers. You can see just how close that is. That stock configuration of the brake lines with the BL Fab turbo headers going forward. And it's just way too close for comfort. And then also this ABS module is literally right in the way of the gorgeous turbo. So I want to get rid of that, taking this out. Um, I'll show you some of the things right here. The easiest cheat code for this is this uh, chase base fitting for the rear brake lines. I'm planning to do a line lock for the front and then I'll get into the specifics how the rest of that goes. But that's the plan um, is to just entirely delete the ABS and then make custom lines uh, leaving the rear but basically just teeing into the part in the bottom here. Um, yeah. So this is already torn apart a little bit. This is uh, the front caliper things are taken off. This is actually pretty easy to get off. You just twist that little fitting and then bam, things start coming apart. Um, the top here, I have the one off. This one, yep. I drained the fluid from this here using a fluid pump. <clears throat> it helped to not have a whole bunch of it go everywhere when emptying it. The front driver, this position, you can get a tube down pretty deep in there and empty that out. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna start taking out more of these and then I'll try and remember to film this uh, ABS module taking it out. Okay, I'm gonna try to film taking this out. You can see here's the two main ones that go to master cylinder. The other ones go underneath to the side over there. And then uh, you'll see the ones in the rear. They're just tucked up in here right now. I'm going to try to very carefully finagle everything out. Okay, look, here's all this mess there. Look at that. Pretty easily coming out so far. Keep playing nice, boys. and angle that out so I'm gonna turn the camera off but I'll be right back. Okay so that was a little bit hard to film getting it out but here is the rat's nest of the stock ABS module with the brake lines. So this is the <clears throat> the nut that goes on to the passenger front. This one is the driver front. Here is the rears, the two that attach here in this wheel well that go to the rear. I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna tee into that. And then these two go to the master. And here's the whole ABS module. So, I still need to figure out what I'm gonna to do to clean up the wiring and stuff. But, there's the turbo right there. Nothing hitting it anymore. Nice and clean. Nothing hitting the headers here nice and neat ah it's the little things that makes me so happy man it looks so much better 
nothing hitting the turbo now. Nothing's gonna freak it out. And we will run the lines on the inside of the wheel well here now instead of in here by the headers. So those headers will not be heating up the brake lines and boiling the brake fluid. Very, very happy about the progress. Okay, so I'm failing at filming this, but here's uh, starting to mock up things. So these are the two fittings that go in the top here, and I'll have to describe exactly what the fittings are, but there's fittings that adapt to go into the master cylinder here, and then some Amazon braided lines that go from there down into the wheel well. So it's kind of a mess, but you'll see if I can hold everything here. Um, the one that goes from the front comes down to here and then it's adapted to go into the line lock and then after the line lock my idea is to do a T fitting for the rear so far it looks like it's literally just gonna like screw in the, uh, the rear one comes down right here here's the rear this one and then this chase base fitting literally just screws right onto the rear ones there's a, on the rear, the bottom comes up. Here's the fitting. The fitting has a um, female to female, and then the top comes down into this here. So you just have to remove the female to female, which is right here. This is the one side, I'm about to take the other side off. So yeah, and then this gets replaced with the chase base fitting right here. And I'll show that in a moment when I'm all done. But I'm hoping the rear is going to be super simple. Okay, so the rear really does just screw right in. So the top has this adapter, right? Adapter to the braided line. Comes down here. Hold on, let me get my phone, phone light and GoPro set up. All right, so line comes down here. Goes in the chase base fitting. Sorry this is in the way, but those screw right in. You just have to switch these two lines because the one on the left has this big old curve to it. I'm not filming this very well. I'm definitely not a professional YouTuber. But yeah, switch these two lines here so that the one that has this massive bend in it goes on the inside. That way you can line them up and they actually go in without binding. The threads go in smooth. And then you literally just screw that in. Now that the rear is literally done, that's it. There's the rear. So then the front, the front, I'll have to work on that later. I'm not going to keep going with that, but I've been making custom lines and uh, in theory, just need to take the uh, one part of the T here into that right there for this caliper and one to the other side and that's pretty much it. We'll see if it actually goes that smooth, but man, that is so nice and clean having that out of there. I finished up the tucking the wiring out of the way and stuff. So now it's all nice and clean in here. I cleaned up a little bit of this area here. I actually think I found, I'm not sure if it is or not, but I took this little rat's nest here and cleaned it up. And I'm pretty sure that this sensor ended up tying it right there. I'm pretty sure that's the uh, outside air temp sensor, which probably was hanging up in here somewhere. And so the readings on the dash were super high because it's in by all the heat. So put it up there and then I might might get an accurate reading, which would be pretty cool. So, yeah, there's progress. I'll try to keep filming some more stuff later. Okay, so fast forward a couple days and the lines are now done. I'm gonna show you everything that I did and specifics of what worked and how it all got the kinks figured out. Um, I did have my buddy Daniel help for several days. This was probably two, three days. Uh, and the last day he, he came and then he had to leave and go get dinner and then come back and then we finished bleeding on the lines. So um, it takes a little while to get this done. Um, I'd say a solid couple days. If you had all the parts, maybe one solid day, get it all finished. Um, and then you need a friend to help bleed everything unless you have one of those kits that'll pull suction on it. You could do it by yourself or the pressure one, but um, it was pretty easy to bleed everything. The normal way and then I had a little vacuum thing to help for some of the extra air to get out um, nothing too bad and sorry I'm sweating because uh, it's Texas and it's 95 and like 95 degrees 45 percent humidity it's it's hot here in Texas um, but okay so the top up here there is a, a fitting adapter for both on the master here so as mentioned before 
Uh, one is 3 a.n. and the other is 4 a.n. So the 4 a.n. one goes to the front and the 3 a.n. goes to the back. Both of these have an adapter. I'm just gonna put all the specifics and the details of this video for what they are. Um, these are the same adapters that other people have used. I was recommended to use them and they are great. You do need to use a crush washer for these fittings because otherwise they will leak. So I just got a kit of a bunch of crush washers um, of assorted sizes so that I could get the right one. And we just test them to make sure that they actually crushed. You'll see the first one that I tried, it didn't crush at all. This is for the smaller, the 3 an one. Didn't crush at all, so it was still leaking a little bit. Had to do it again. And here's an example of one that did work. And you probably can't see this that well on video, but this actually did crush and it was actually working. Um, that was essential to get the upper fittings up here to not leak. Uh, but then after that, then the AN lines, they go right on. Those are easy. That was not a problem at all. I think it was helpful to do the braided lines because it's very flexible for this area here in the engine bay. It made it a whole lot easier to fit things in there, move things around, you know, make it adjustable and stuff. So yes, on the top up here, the 3AN adapter fitting with crush washer. On the other side, the 4AN adapter fitting with crush washer and then the respective 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. braided lines with the length that you need to get down into the, the wheel well. Let me get some light here. Okay, so on the rear, I'm trying to make sure you can see. In the rear here, this chase base fitting is essential. It's super helpful. That braided line is a 3 a.m. It just comes right down, goes right onto that. And then these two lines, you just swap them because it allows you to put them in without tension. Um, and those two, the fittings will line up that way. If you try to do them the normal way, uh, it'll bind and you can't get it to thread right and you don't want to cross thread it and cause issues. So um, that is super helpful. Definitely recommend that chase base fitting. Looks like everybody does that whenever they're doing the rears. And that's it for the rear. It's just the adapter. Braided line, chase bays, right into the two rears, bleed it, done. The fronts, this is where I did it different from other people. Other people um, have done just hard lines or just braided lines. Um, I wanted to do the line lock and then the hard lines. And so I'll show you how I did that here. Okay, I swapped my phone light because the other one was too bright. but. Here we go. So, like I was showing, chase base fitting. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the front ones. So, the front, it starts in the top up here, and it is the 4 an of the lines. So you have the adapter with the crush washer, the 4 an braided line. Um, I think I started with a 12 inch braided line, and it wasn't long enough. Um, so I got a 16 inch, and it was, I'd say it was about an inch too long, but you know, a little extra slack in there and it worked out great. Once again, I'll put all the specifics to this in here, but braided line, adapter, adapter goes into the line lock. I basically used the line lock to be a uh, opportunity to reduce things. So I went from 4 a.m. to 3 a.m. because pretty much all of the hard lines that they sell are 3 16 which is more compatible with 3 a.m. than a 4 a.m. fitting. So in my opinion, it was easier just to convert using the line lock. So I basically went in with 4 a.m. into the thread that comes on this line lock. And then on the other side, the threads convert to all of the regular uh, hard line fittings for the brake lines. So I teed it right there and went up and then I went over. Uh, I still haven't wired in the line lock. I'll probably make another video on that later, how I do that specifically. But for right now, it's just taped up and, and zip tied out of the way. <clears throat> so just keep going with the lines. This top one here on the T just is a uh, 3 16 hard line fitting with um, the double bubble flares on the lines. So top one goes to this driver caliper 
and then there's an adapter here and that took me a little bit to figure out the let me talk about this over here the fittings have to be the exact right ending so like this here you can see it has like an in like a concave ending on it and some of the fittings on the car they have you know that's what they receive there's a a bubble up and so you need to have the bubble down i don't know if that makes sense but it needs to be the same concavity to smash that flare in there properly so the regular fittings that come with hard lines look something like this and one this is not deep enough and two it didn't have the right flare on the end so this is not the correct one the correct one that went in there is bubbled out with this length and that is what pushes down into the double flare on the end of the hard line into the fitting and that's that's what's in here so this is the regular 3 16 um fitting that's what comes with most all 3 16 hard line and then it's adapted into uh, a du double bubble on the top here and then inverted uh, or like concave out into the bottom fitting here on the stock brake lines so that was essential to get that to work if you just try to do the regular hard line fittings into this it leaks it doesn't bottom out it doesn't push any pressure on the double bubble um, ending of the hard line so that was essential to figure out it's the exact same thing like this on the passenger side and basically that line I just went from right here and then follow the K member on the front all the way around which is pretty much what they do from the factory because the ABS is here and so it also goes down that way and I was trying to think ahead if I ever have to pull the engine out again if that line is on the front of the K member you could still drop the K member engine trans stuff like that if you went down the back it would be in the way of dropping the engine out so try to make it easy to work with and this is all nickel copper hard line is very easy to bend i got a little bender because it made things simple for working with it so this little bender tool super cheap easy to get worked great for putting the bends in then if you need to move it a little bit more with your hands that was easy i got a deburring tool as well that helped for cleaning them up and then i still had a whole bunch left over of the nickel copper line and this was the shorter the 12 inch of the braided lines which were really great i like these i just need a little bit longer <clears throat> so that's most everything that i learned after that then i just bled the whole system i think i did it twice all the way around going you know rear passenger rear driver front passenger front driver bled the whole thing twice um, i think i used a total of Shoot, I bought another bottle of brake fluid because, you know, trial and error and stuff. So I think I went through a whole 32 ounces pretty much of dot three brake fluid. <clears throat> and that's what finally got it done. So um, if you all have more experience and know how to do this better, feel free to comment. I can always update this, change things. And, you know, I'm still learning and figuring out how to do things best for these cars. But this does work. I've driven it three or four times now. Um, I took it to Rides and Coffee and did a couple hits on it and it's been fine. Everything's great. Um, once again, the fix for this was making sure that it doesn't hit the turbo because the ABS was hitting this turbo really bad. And then also the brake lines were right here <clears throat> and they were, they were melting all of the, the coverings for the the brake lines and they was pretty much boiling all the brake fluid as well so this is one cleaning up the engine bay but two fixing the, the problems that i had there and it was fun to learn um it was quite the process and uh, a new skill to have new tools to have <laughs> yay for more crush washers and more tools and stuff um i hope that this video helps some of y'all and if you have any questions please feel free to comment um or any critiques as well. I'm happy to learn uh, more from somebody that knows more. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good rest of the day.